Historic Hudson Valley is a collection of unparalleled homes in Westchester County. It represents homes from the 18th century through the present day homes that were occupied by colonial families that owned much of the county to homes that were occupied by some of what we consider our contemporary founding families such as the Rockefellers. These are extraordinary places to tell the history of the United States with tours and public programs across our sites, but primarily these programs have been devoted to telling you the story of the men who own those properties, who own that land, who made such contributions to American government and society. But what we neglected were the stories of the women who were their spouses, their daughters, in some cases their servants or were enslaved by them, and who were really left out of our interpretation not all together, but in a fundamental way. And so the job of the Women's History Institute is to correct that, to reintroduce these women to the story that wouldn't exist without them. Back in 2016, I met with the Star Cuts and Valley leadership and board members to discuss how we might want to recognize the loss of three women who had been supporters of HHV and overseen the growth of the Star Cuts and Valley for many years. Specifically, Happy Rockefeller, Molly Schaefer, and Carol Plunkett. These women, in many ways, represented the core of the HHV mission and inspired us as an institution. The idea of a women's historical initiative arose from interest in celebrating these strong contemporary women. The Women's History Institute brings to life the stories and experiences of the women of the Hudson Valley region through creative programming, events, and really critical research, we all have the opportunity to learn about and appreciate just how invaluable their work has been. One of my favorite programs from the Women's History Institute is Vote Like a Girl. That's a summertime festival that we hold at Washington Irving Sunnyside where we focus on citizenship and suffrage. We're offering young women the opportunity to learn more about the history of women's suffrage, about the ways in which American women fought for the right to vote and received it. We teach them about the ways in which civics can impact their daily lives and how they can be more active citizens. We believe then, as we do now, that by recognizing the bold and courageous women who came before us, we can inspire the women of today and ultimately impact the women of tomorrow. The Virtual Transcription Project is an initiative at Historic Hudson Valley that involves many volunteers that are reading thousands of pieces of material over four centuries of history. We're creating a digital, searchable format for scholars to come in and be able to take advantage of everything that the archive owns. I was given a random set of six letters by a woman named Anna Cartha Miller. Her letters contained a really fascinating story. Anna Cartha met a woman named Alice Anna Hoffman. The Hoffman family is where this whole collection at the Women's History Institute came from. And they had a friend, Elizabeth Spencer, who was a formerly enslaved woman in Curacao. At some point, Elizabeth was able to free herself, but she still had daughters who were enslaved in Curacao. And Anna Cartha and Anne worked together with Elizabeth to bring the daughters from Curacao to New York so they could live in freedom. These women were very early participants in the anti-slavery movement in New York and hence the United States. So I think we're really uncovering a unique little piece of history here that's not only going to fit into the bigger puzzle that we're putting together about the past, but can really make us understand who we are as Americans, what we've been fighting for, what our ideals are, and how do we want to define ourselves. Every summer, the Women's History Institute invites two researchers from colleges and universities around the area to come and explore in our archives. These young scholars have an amazing ability to uncover the hidden gems that are in the library collection and to turn them into really compelling narratives about the role of women and the significance of their work in the early days of the Hudson Valley. The research fellowship was an amazing experience. I loved it and learned so much. I researched divorce and marriage law in the Hudson Valley and specifically focused on Gertrude Beekman's divorce papers, which was a primary document here at the historic Hudson Valley. We revealed 
these really sort of dramatic court cases that she was a part of in conjunction with this divorce that was very controversial. I ended up really painting like a whole picture of this woman's life and was able to contextualize it in the Hudson Valley. It was really a great project. We're delighted that our education team was awarded a prestigious grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities for Invisible Women, an interactive digital school program that focuses on the experience of both enslaved and free women who lived at Phillipsburg and Van Cortlandt Manors in early America. All of these programs share one common goal, the goal of illuminating the contributions of women around this region through research, through programming. There is so much more that we would like to do. With the support of the community, we can continue giving voice to the women of the Hudson Valley and expanding the impact and reach of the Women's History Institute through our existing programs and the continued development of new programming in the years ahead.